guys, welcome to another week of Prep Cook Plate Repeat, PCPR. This week's episode, we're making an epic fried chicken sandwich on a pretzel bun. We brined the chicken. We're going to be using our house-made pickles that we did a few episodes ago. And we're going to make a beautiful, spicy hot sauce to go with this. So stay tuned. All right, guys. So the first thing that we did was, if you went back a few uh, episodes ago, we made some pickles. We took that exact brine and we used it and we put our chicken thighs in there. As you can see, we got some beautiful chicken thighs here. No bone and they're skin on. We want that for crispiness. All I did was I marinated these bad boys a day before. The entire day, I took them out an hour in advance and I pat them dry just so the oil doesn't go crazy on you when you go to fry them. So that's the first step you have to do for the chicken. Next step, key step, is the flour. We want to season this flour. So in front of me, I have a variety of spices. First thing we're gonna do is a teaspoon here of each. So I have cayenne pepper, one teaspoon right in. I have one teaspoon of garlic powder, right in. I'm gonna do two teaspoons of salt, right in. One teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of chili powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, and then we got some black pepper here. We're gonna go right in a teaspoon as well. We're gonna mix that up really good. Mix all that up. All right, now that's all mixed. We're gonna set that aside. So next thing, first thing we're gonna do is, in the bowl, I have three eggs, okay? Got three eggs in front of me. We're going to do a standard breading station, which is flour, eggs, and breadcrumb, right? If you do chicken parm cutlets, if you do veal cutlets, if you were to bread eggplant, whatever it may be, this is your standard breading procedure. It's always flour, it's always eggs, and it's always breadcrumb. So first thing we're going to do, take our chicken, put it into flour. We want to make sure it's nicely coated. There's no spots exposed because we don't want the meat to burn. All right, you want everything to evenly cook. Dredge that off, nice. Any excess flour, throw this, this bad boy right inside the egg. Now I always keep one hand just for the egg and then one hand for um, the flour so you're not creating clumps. Let's make sure everything is nice. Just like that. Drip off any excess egg. And then it's gonna go right into our mixture here of breadcrumb that we have. Gonna really pat down that breadcrumb. We want it to adhere to the chicken, right? Beautiful. Make sure it's nice and coated. There's no lumps, you don't want any lumps. That's why you bang off the egg you don't want lumps. You want nice, clean surface on here. Now you can use any breadcrumb. You can use Italian if you like. It doesn't really go with fried chicken, but I went with a plain uh, panko, which is fine, but it's up to you what, what you like. And that's what it should look like. Just like that. Evenly coated every spot, right? If I miss a spot, go right on there. And there you go, just like that. We're gonna lay this to the side and then we're gonna start getting going on our coleslaw. So you can put this to the side and be right back. All right guys, so after your chicken's all breaded and everything, just wanna add on that last note, I added a teaspoon of oregano as well and that's two cups of flour in that bowl, just so you guys have your numbers there. All right, so we're gonna get started with the coleslaw. As this is getting started, you can, on your stove, nice pot of uh, corn oil, vegetable oil, whatever you have, 350. All right, just get that going as well. First thing we're gonna do is gonna use do our coleslaw. I'm gonna cut it in half. Here I just have some greens and I have some reds. Just regular cabbage at your local supermarket. All right, you're gonna take out the heart. That's the first thing you wanna do. Get that out of there. Then we're gonna cut it in half one way to get some smaller strips. We don't want super long strips, but we want that green there, right? So now with your knife, we're gonna do some julienne cut. All you do is just shredding the cabbage. Just like that, right? 
Okay, got about half of a cabbage there shredded. Okay, I'm gonna put that in a bowl to the side. Okay, just like that. You're gonna do the same exact thing with your red cabbage, right? Cut it in half once. And core it. Take the heart out. Same thing, cut it once against it. And then we're gonna julienne the same exact way. Just like that. Okay, that's about a quarter of a cabbage we just used right there, just shredded. Okay? All right. So next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna come right back and we're gonna start making our sauce. All right guys, so we're gonna make the coleslaw dressing. All right, first thing we're gonna do, you need to dissolve your sugar first. So, tablespoon, got one, and I got two. You can go more if you like a sweeter coleslaw like they do in the south, but we're here in the north, we're gonna make it not as sweet. All right, we're gonna add a little bit of pepper, about half of a teaspoon, right in, and add salt. Half of a teaspoon as well of salt, right in. Next thing, mayo, right? It's one of the bases. Oh, I'm not, I apologize, sir, not mayo. First, we need to dissolve the sugar. Just some white vinegar. Let's get these measuring cups here. I'm gonna do one cup of white vinegar. Right in, okay? Then, you wanna take your whisk. You wanna whisk all that up. Nice, so that sugar dissolves. Just keep whisking it around. Just like that. Looks like everything's dissolved, diluted in there. Beautiful. All right, so that's ready. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our mayonnaise. So I have one tablespoon, two tablespoons, three tablespoons of mayonnaise, and then some nice deli mustard. We're going to do one and a half teaspoons. You're going to take your whisk and really whisk all of that in. Just like that. Now, if you see it's a little loose and a little liquid state, then add more mayonnaise, which we're going to. One. And there you go. That's a lot better now. Right? Now that's going to be able to grab onto the coleslaw instead of drip down off of it. Now that that's made, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your coleslaw that you cut already previously, and just gonna throw it right in there. Boom. You're gonna let that vinegar almost start to pickle that cabbage, start to break it down. Just like that. Now you can make this a day in advance. The longer it sits, the better, more intensified flavor that you're gonna get out of it. All right, beautiful. We're gonna throw this in the fridge, we're gonna let it sit. We're gonna start working on our hot sauce. So we'll be right back. All right guys, now that your coleslaw is all made, set aside, it's getting cold, we're gonna start doing our hot sauce from scratch. So what I got here, I got about five garlic cloves, right? You're gonna take your knife and you're just gonna smash them, all right? Just releasing that essential oils and flavors right out of it. I'm gonna throw that inside this pot right in front. Five garlic cloves, and I have one whole cup of vinegar right inside, all right? I'm gonna add a little bit more vinegar. I'm gonna do a cup and a half of just regular distilled vinegar, okay? After that, I have 30 dried Thai chilies in here with the seeds 
bad boy is going to be hot, but it's going to be flavorful. It's not going to be vinegary and nasty. It's going to have really good flavor. So we got that. And then we also have a half of a red bell pepper. One, to preserve its red color, and two, for more flavor, right? We're going to add a little bit of salt right into there. That's about one teaspoon. We're going to add about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. All you're going to do is you're going to get this right onto the stove. You're going to boil it. Once that pepper is really tender and that garlic is tender, we're going to take it off. We're going to put it in the blender. And we're going to taste to see if it needs any, any more salt or anything. But that's just a basic, basic hot sauce right here. So we'll get this on the stove. We'll also jump over to the stove. We're going to start frying our chicken. All right, guys. So now that your hot sauce is cooking, next thing we're going to do is we're going to cook our chicken. So you're going to have the oil 350 degrees, right? You're going to put one chicken in gently. That's where you should start to see right there. Boom. I'm going to put one more piece of chicken right in. And then also I'm going to raise the heat on this because I want to maintain that 350 because it probably just drops about 325 right now. We don't want the chicken to steam and boil away. We want it to get crispy and fry. So that's why we put the heat back up. Just a little bit more. I'm going to let this fry for about six to seven minutes. And then we're going to come back and check on this thing. All right, so we'll be right back. All right, guys, now that you're concoction of hot sauce has boiled away and it's soft the garlic is soft <clears throat> you can smell the chilies and the vinegar is going to hit you hard in the face we're going to pour it right into our vitamix here now the key to a nice smooth hot sauce is that it's blended while it is hot if you do it and wait it's going to be lumpy you don't want that you want a nice smooth consistent hot sauce so we're going to put this on first speed, just gonna blend that up nice until it's fully blended. Turn it off. That was loud, huh? Smell if you dare. <coughs> that's good stuff, though. That's nice. Yep, that's real nice. Let's give it a little taste test. <coughs> See how hot it is. How flavorful as well. Oh yeah. It's hot all right. It's got good flavor though. Good stuff. <clears throat> we'll be right back. We're gonna put all this together. We're gonna toast our bun in the oven or you can toast it in a regular toaster. Come back and put everything together. Be right back. All right guys, so now the chicken is fried, your bread is toasted, your coleslaw is ready and your hot sauce is ready. And by the way, I added a touch of honey because I was uh, tearing a little bit between uh, shots. So I had to add a little honey because it was a little hot. But if you like it super hot, you could left it the way it is. Touch the honey, helped it out, and cooled it down a bit. So we're going to roll with that. Your fried chicken is beautiful. Look at that piece of fried chicken right there. Hear that? Crispiness. It's not soggy. All right? We're going to add a little bit of the hot sauce. You can do. We're just going to coat the chicken a little bit. You can definitely leave this on the side if you like. It doesn't have to go on the chicken. All right, so we're, this is just called dressing it. That's just a word in the uh, culinary field. You're just dressing the chicken, right? Just like that. Swim it, let it swim in that sauce. That's what we do best here, All right? Beautiful. That's ready to go. We're gonna grab our pretzel bun that we have here, All right? We're gonna take our chicken that we just dressed. We're gonna put it right on there. That's some that's starting to come together now, real nice. Some of our coleslaw that we have here. Nice creamy coleslaw. Flavorful. Just like that, right on top. And then here we got a couple of those beautiful pickles that we made a few shoots ago. Just to complement it. It's got a little tartness, a little bitterness, a little sweetness. So it's really nice. That's what you want right there. There it is, guys. Fried chicken sandwich with coleslaw and house-made pickles. Beautiful. All right, guys. We hope that you enjoyed this week's episode on Prep, Cook, Plate, Repeat. We made a fried chicken, coleslaw, 
some house pickles, and a really kick-ass hot sauce. Stay tuned for next week. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. We'll see you soon.